G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today, I've got an SEO recovery case study. Now I'm going to show you how to recover from any Google penalty. So as you can see behind me guys, I've got a client that I'm working with that's a chiropractor. So I just wanna show you this information right here. So if you look down at the keywords, this is where I really want you to focus. They decided to jump on the chat GPT bandwagon and produce a mass amount of informational content. Thought it would have been a swell idea. Well, it was for a couple of months. It did bring in a heap more clients and patients. But when we look at this huge drop off over here, what happened? Well, for the first time in this history of this clinic, they didn't get a new patient. Zero, nothing. So it was panic stations because there's four chiropractors here. There's actual four chiropractors in this clinic. This is where. I started getting involved the following month because obviously it was panic stations. Now, if we have a look over here, you might look at this and go, Ron, what are you talking about, mate? You've been able to get half the keywords back. Look down here. As an example, I just want you to have a look down here. Now, I have had to blur these out. I never show client stuff. I always show my own stuff. If people are like, oh, this could be manufactured. Well, I'm ranking number one for roofing SEO against all of the big companies out there. So I can show I rank if you have any interjections about that. So I've proven that side of it and that's my own asset. So as you can see down here, guys, these are the keywords that essentially are the ones that are bringing them all to work. So this is fantastic. So if you look over here, you might sit there and be like, oh, Ronnie, you've won half the traffic back. I don't care about traffic, guys. I, I don't care about how many keywords I rank for. What I care about, what I really care about is how much money I'm returning for this business. At the end of the day, if I work with a plumber that has three main services, right? Three main services, they replace hot water systems, they fix leaking faucets, and they repair block dunnies. Dunnies, uh, what they're called in Australia. That's how I'll be referring to them here. They're fixing those three services. Who cares if I have one keyword ranking for how to fix your block dunny with a plunger? No one cares. If they only rank for those three terms in Fort Lauderdale, everyone's happy. No one's going to be like, oh man, SEO. <laughs> Who cares if it says three keywords? Who cares? If that phone's ringing, that's all that matters. So today I'm going to show you how to perform an SEO recovery so you can recover from any Google update and you can achieve this because this month we'll be able to get 23 new patients in there. So that's paid up to date for all of the SEO work done. How good's that? All of it's been recovered in month three. Fantastic, isn't it? So let me show you how you can do and achieve this. All right, so over here, I've got Neil Patel's website. Now, as you can see over here, good old Neil, he's taken a little bit of a hit. So he's gone from in September, he was ranking for 353,000 keywords, and now he's all the way down to 222,000. So he's been smacked, all right? Now, when you've been smacked by Google, so when you're trying to perform an SEO recovery and you're just trying to bounce back and you're trying to fix these lost rankings, you're going to need something like SEMrush and Google Search Console. So first things first, what we want to do is we want to come over to the organic research tab. So come over here, click on that. Now, depending upon how big that would be, like as you can see, Neil, we don't have Neil Patel websites. I'm just using it to show you because I know he's taken a bit of a hit because I like following what he's doing with his website. So what do I, what am I looking at? The main thing that I'm looking at is I want to come across and over at this stuff in, up here, so position changes, I'm clicking on that. Now this is, they say new feature, but it's been around a while in, in SEMrush and I do recommend it. It's hit and miss guys, to be completely honest. It is hit and miss. You would have been ranking for something if you look organically, but then if you look the other way, it's, it's gone. Now, this is the way you want to filter. So I come down here, okay, positions. So I click on this when it loads. Now I go top three. Now, the reason I go top three is because if you truly think about it, that's where you're making your money. Because if you've got a keyword in the top three, chances are that's generating your leads. If you've got a keyword in position number nine, eight, you know, like is it generating your leads? Possibly, possibly. But if it's in position one, two, or three, chances are that phone's ringing, all right? So that's why I start looking at top three. Now, next thing I do is declined, 
and lost. So I apply that. Now I'm looking at lost because I might have been in position number two and she's gone. She's gone. She's been kicked off. Uh, decreased. It's gone from position number one down to position number six. So let's have a look. Email marketing. Perfect example. He was in position number two, guys. He was in position number two. And now he's down to position number six. So how many leads do you think he's getting down there? How drastic would that decrease be? So he was getting, there's 33,000 visitors every single month for that keyword. In position number two, surely, surely Neil would have been getting at least 10,000 visitors to, to this page. What would he be getting now? He'd probably be getting maybe 1,000, maybe. So that's a huge, huge cut in leads and traffic that he's just lost. Google Secrets, gone for number three, down to number four. Website traffic checking, two to three. And as you can see, the list just goes on. This is where you really want to be looking. And this is where you can start to see because you'll be able to analyze what keywords have actually been lost. So export this data, throw it into a Google Sheet. Okay, so just have it sitting over there, but export it all, throw it into a Google Sheet. Because what you're going to be able to do is look at the pages and the keywords that have been hit. Now, I will talk about the strategy on how to tie it all in at the end of the video. So hang around. If you're liking this though, guys, make sure you like and subscribe if you're enjoying it and put a cheeky comment down below. Let me know how you've uh, been hit by Google in the past and how much money you lost because your website got whacked. I'm very interested in learning about that because it sucks. Well, it's it's good if you win a, win a client like I did because because of it, but uh, it sucks when you, when you go and have to hire someone like myself. So let me know in the comments down below. But as you can see here, guys, export all of that data. You'll have all of that data to actually analyze. And the reason I do it in SEMrush is because it is an outside looking in tool. You know, Google Console will jump into that shortly and momentarily. But the thing is, with SEMrush, you're going to be able to look at it from an SEO tools perspective, which is fantastic. You get all of this extra data. Okay, fantastic. Now, when you're performing an SEO recovery, it's not only enough to just look at the keywords because it's your content that Google might not like. Remember, when you think about it like this, if your if your performance of on-page keywords, so to speak, start dropping, what caused that? You need to start thinking about the causes. So that's why you've got to start looking at the backlink profile to see what happens. So I come over here, let's go up the top, let's go backlink analytics. Now, what I'm looking for is a drop or an increase in backlink. So as you can see here, <laughs> that's pretty wild. They've, uh, so they got the hit in September. They got whack starting in September, but look at these referring domains, guys. So they were sort of sitting around 130, like uh, mid 135,000-ish, around, around there. And then September, they built, what, an extra maybe 5,000? Over the next following months, they probably built about 16,000 extra referring domains. But take a note of this. Have a look over at the actual backlinks. Remember, for referring domains is just a link from one website. Backlinks could be 10 backlinks coming from that one referring domain. Have a look at this. So if we go to, let's go August, look at the drop down. Look at the drop. That's heaps guys that's millions of backlinks millions millions of backlinks lost is that going to hurt your seo oh you better believe it now it's nice that they're sort of countering it with all of these referring domains but the backlinks really matter now let me give you an example if you were to sit here and say ron i, I i'm going to give you two options mate what do you want you've got three referring domains or you've got three backlinks from one domain. Of course, I'm going to say, give me the three referring domains, mate. Now, that's if I'm building on a campaign or I'm trying to keep something up the top. However, if I'm up the top already, everything's going really well. I don't not want a page to have a backlink because I've already got a link from that referring dom domain. Send me as many backlinks as possible from that domain. Who cares? Why not? If one good link's good, if it's a relevant page, Send it on over, mate. And that's probably what's happened here is all of these backlinks, that's millions of backlinks have been lost. So that's going to be massively hurting these guys. Now, in the chiropractor example, those guys got whacked because they used AI content. So you're going to notice very easily in the keyword analyzation, the position analyzation, 
what's going on here? You'd come into the backlink profile. You see that it's standard. As you saw from the image, guys, there's not many backlinks going to that profile. But the thing is, it's not that. So, so that tells me immediately that it's not the backlinks impacting it. It's the content that's on the page. It was straight from ChatGPT. And that's just been absolutely nuked. So that's why you've got to start with the keywords, see what's going on with the on-page content, check if it's AI, then come into the backlinks. This is the process. And when you're trying to recover from an update hit, the next thing you want to look at is the raw data in Google Search Console. So come over to Google Search Console, all right? Have a look at the full report, go into the performance. Make sure you have everything shown, guys. So let's get all this bad boy showing. All right. Now, to compare the data, I'm going to click on this, and I'm terribly sorry, but this is lagging for a second. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, good old Chrome glitched out on me, so that was fantastic. Now, what you want to do, okay, you want to go compare. All right, so compare. Now, let's go last 28 days so we get a bit of data. We can look at month by month. So you'll just go apply. And then what's going to happen is it's going to start showing all of these queries and pages. Now, the main thing is don't look at the clicks, look at the impressions. Start with the impressions. So if I have a look over here, okay, I'm looking at this keyword specifically over here, and I can see that over the last 28 days, and this thing's freezing up again, but we'll try and crack on because we can still see it. We can see that the impression difference has actually increased. Awesome, awesome. But if we come down to the Zimrider one just down here, okay, if we have a look at the Zimrider, you'll notice that it's actually a decrease of impressions. It's down by 106. And this is where you need to sit there and go, oh no, is that a problem? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So if I go at the total impressions, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's lost 106 impressions. But let's, let's look at the clicks now and see what the click difference is. Oh, I gained. I gained four extra clicks. Happy days. Like, that's awesome. That's what I want to see. So do I need to be nervous about that slight loss there? No. You look for those really, really, really big losses. So let's have a look. Let's. There's going to be some real big losses. On-page SEO. Here we go. This keyword right here. This keyword right here. Have a look at this for the impressions, guys. Now, no clicks because what my average position is 65 for on-page SEO. Of course, I'm not going to beat the Neil, Neil Patels and all those big guys. Beat him on some keywords, but not every keyword, especially not one like this just yet. So as you can see, look at the impression difference, all right? Look at that, minus 3,800. This is when you want to start paying attention. This is when you would be like, okay, what's going on here? This page that it's on is taking a significant hit. And then the next process, I'm going to show you how you tie it all in so you can recover from an SEO whack and a Google recovery update. So now that you're armed with all of this knowledge, how do you recover from a Google penalty? Well, when you're recovering from an SEO hit, it's very, very important that you have all of that data there. You should be looking at all of that information together and comparing it page by page. And it's fantastic. A great, great tip that I would suggest is comparing SEMrush to your Google Search Console. So like I showed you with that on-page dropdown for me, I should be looking at the in SEMrush for myself and seeing if that's reflected in SEMrush. And if it is, I can start to be like, okay, we have a problem here, which is exactly what we did with the chiropractor. I noticed like, look at this drop, guys. Look at this drop. And I'm going to be honest. Of course, I knew that it was ChatGPT. As soon as the owner said, Ronnie, ChatGPT, mate, this is what we've been doing. <laughs> of course, I'm like, mate, ooh, we got to remove some things. And a great way of telling you which, which content to actually remove is one, if it is AI and someone fesses up to it and it's not doing too well. Now, this whole content pruning uh, strategy, I don't know how I feel about it. To be honest, I don't like deleting pages. Um, I think sometimes pages from the start, a campaign. Now, I'll delete pages from this site like I've done. I'll delete pages from this site. But going forward, all of the pages on there are because they're the designed to be on there the design to support another topic which supports the main topic which supports that topic. So pruning content is not something that I really like doing after I've gone in there. I haven't actually seen where it's benefited me in any way, shape or form. Not once. I haven't seen it. Unless there's cannibalization happening, 
that's when you'd prune it down. But you need to cut away content when it's something like this. Something like this will happen. That's when it's okay, when it's the start of the campaign. So you want to look at all that information. Make sure you're looking at that backlink profile, guys, because best way to do negative SEO, send a heap of backlinks in somewhere and take them away. You know, like that's how negative SEO is done. So you want to make sure that you're looking at that. And if you do actually notice that, you could also be getting whacked from a competitor as well. So if you notice that a keyword's just not moving, it keeps going down, everything's all right, but you're noticing all of these backlinks are showing up and then dropping off, showing up, then dropping off, showing up, then drop. You're being hit. You're being targeted. That's how you can tell right. And then you need to go back to the start. So you're going to have this page that's been hit like they did here. Now, let's say I like the URL, everything's hunky-dory, there's some links coming into it. What do I do? I do exactly what I would do at the start of a campaign. Let's do the keyword research again. Let's see what the main things are that we want to go after. We want to make sure that we're going to kill it again, like we are here. Rank number one in the, in the organics, number one in the map pack too. So it's an awesome thing to achieve when you go back and do all the research again. You need to make sure you're targeting the right keywords because you might only be targeting a keyword down here, as you can see, that's uh, 90. Yeah, we're ranking for it, but why would I give up the 90 for the 320? So make sure you're performing all of your checks again. Go and look at what your competitors are doing too, the ones that have gone on top of you. Now, you want to focus on your competitors and see, have they been a little bit naughty to you with that whole backlink, the negative SEO that I was just talking about, but start to see what backlinks they're building. Because if they're building in new backlinks, go and try and get them. Because if they're moving up higher, you you guys have the same on page, everything else is the same, but they're starting to creep up. You need the backlinks that they've got. It's that simple. Go out there and ask for those backlinks. Bid on those backlinks and see what happens. Now, if you've gained value from this video or you're facing this problem, reach out to me. There's a link down below to book a free 15-minute chat. We can have a good yarn and discuss if you're facing this problem. More than happy to help you out. Now, if you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Put a comment down below about the worst SEO recovery you've ever recovered from because I'm really interested in these types of stories and I hope to see you around, guys. Cheers.